What's going on guys, Shane here. Today I have a beginner's MMA crash course. We're gonna look at some fundamentals and teach you the basic punches, kicks, stance, and footwork. Let's get it started. Okay, let's begin by finding our basic fighting stance. So, we're gonna stand with our feet shoulder width distance apart, bring your arms straight up to the sky and let them fall right in front of you. Elbows in front and your fist should be at cheek level. Now, which hand do you write with? Most of us were right-handed. If so, you're gonna take your right foot and put that in the rear. If you're left-handed, you're gonna stand in a southpaw stance. Great, now the foot that's in the rear, I want you to rotate the foot out slightly to a 45 degree, and this is going to give us extra stability and balance. Bend your knees slightly, and I want you to avoid squeezing your shoulders or flexing your muscles. You wanna stay calm and relaxed here, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about movement and footwork. Whatever direction you wanna go in, that's the foot that moves first. Meaning, if I want to step to my left, then my left leg steps first, and then the right. If I want to step to my right, then my right leg steps first, and then my left. If I want to move forward, then the lead leg steps first, then the rear. And if I want to move backwards, then the rear leg steps first, and then the lead. We do this to avoid crossing our legs, okay? You will see this when fighters get a little bit more advanced in the pro level, but until then, you want to make sure that you master the basic fundamentals, okay? So whatever direction you're going in, make sure you step with that foot first. Let's go over some punches. The first one is the jab, and we often refer to this as the one, okay? It's just extending your lead arm. Don't overcomplicate it, that's all I want you to do. And with every punch that we throw, we're keeping the opposite hand up, protecting our face, okay? So the jab in full looks like this. Okay? So when we throw our jab, all we're doing is corkscrewing our arm as we extend it, aiming to make contact with our fist, protecting our chin with our shoulder. That's why we do that corkscrew motion. And then we retract it as quickly as we throw it, okay? So it's not just a quick and a lazy retraction. We wanna go quick, quick, in, out, in, out, okay? That's the first punch, the jab. Next up, the two is the cross. So it's gonna be the rear hand now, the straight punch, very similar to the jab, except we are going to rotate our hips and pivot on our foot. Okay, we're pushing into the ground, the earth is pushing back up into us, that power is generating and building, going through our body, twisting through our hips, coming up our back, down our shoulder, into our fist, and transferring into our target. Okay, so in full, this is the cross, and again, okay, so all we're doing is just core throwing arm, just like we did with the jab, full extension, making contact with our fist, again, keeping the opposite hand up, protecting our chin with our shoulder, and again, a quick retraction back to guard, okay? Number three is the hook, the lead hook. So the hand that is in front, closer to the target, we're going to rotate on our foot, turn our knee over, turn our hip, and throw the lead hook, which looks like this. Keep your arm bent in a 90 degree, like so. Imagine you have a box and you're holding onto it and you don't wanna drop it. This is the motion to practice the hook here, okay? It's not an arm punch, it's a full body punch. We combine the torque of our hips and the whipping of our shoulder to get speed and power. Again, we keep the opposite hand up the entire time. So in full, it looks like this. And again, good. So remember to keep a 90 degree bend and also keep your elbow in line with your fist and your shoulder in line with your elbow. You don't wanna drop your hand like this because when you make contact, it'll give, it'll cave. We want a strong backing with the elbow right behind the fist when it hits. It just continues to go right through the target. Okay, so once more, we have the one, which is the jab, the two, which is the cross, and the three, which is the hook. The next punch, and the last one that we're gonna teach is just the uppercut. We can do this with the rear, and we can do this with the lead. Similar to the hook, in that it keeps a 90 degree bend, we're gonna do the same thing with the uppercut. It's a short range attack, and it's just to lift our opponent's head up and then follow up with more punches. So we're gonna demonstrate with the rear, very similar to the cross in that we twist our hips, we rotate on the rear foot, and we throw the uppercut at the same time. Now what I want you to avoid is scraping your knuckles on the ground, as we call it. All right, you don't wanna throw those Mortal Kombat punches. Why do you think? It's because if I do this and my opponent throws a left hook, ah, oh, I'm gonna get caught. Instead, I want you to release last second. You're just gonna do minimal drop and throw right from here. That's what that uppercut should look like. keeping the opposite hand up at all times. And the lead looks like this. Okay, so we have the one, the two, the three, and your uppercuts. 
go over some basic kicks. So the first one is going to be the teep. You're going to throw this with both the lead leg and the rear leg. So the teep is we bring our leg up and as we do, we keep a slight bend in our knee. We're going to tilt our upper body back and we're going to shoot our hips forward, driving into the ground with our planted foot. Okay? So a teep looks like this. And once more. Okay, on the first one I did a little bit of a rotation. Okay, this is just get a little bit extra distance and a little more oomph into my kick. But I can keep it more squared and just go here as well. I can hit flat foot or I can hit with the ball of my foot. Meaning I can go here, more surface area, more likely to land, or I can concentrate it into the ball of my foot. This takes a little bit more practice. This comes from my Taekwondo background. So once again, the teep. Just imagine you're trying to kick down a door. It's a great way to keep someone at bay or to knock them off balance. And then you have the rear teep, which covers a little bit more distance and is a little bit stronger, but takes a little bit more time. Leaning the upper body back as you drive the hips forward. Now, we'll often see in Muay Thai and MMA where whatever side kick we throw, we drop that same side hand. You can do that, especially as a beginner, but it's also good to get in the habit of keeping your hands up, okay? So when we throw that rear teep, boom, you can keep your hands up, or more power, boom, you can swing that scissor hand down. Same thing with the lead. Okay, that's the teep, the front push kick. We also have the roundhouse kick, and these can go to the legs, to the body, or to the head. Now, this is going to take a lot of practice, especially the Thai style roundhouse kick, where we have a full follow through. I recommend for beginners when you're shadow boxing, practice a full 360 degree motion. It's going to feel awkward, you're going to feel off balance, but the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel. So let me show you what it looks like in full. I'll throw a right roundhouse kick to the body. Okay, it may look advanced, but if I do it in slow motion, you'll see it's not that hard. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take a cheat step with our non-kicking leg. 45 degree angle, this is opening up our hips and starting to pull us in the motion of the kick. From here, I'm going to aim with my knee and I'm starting to swing my arms across. So my right hand comes across my face as I put my pressure onto my lead leg. I aim with my knee past the target. I go past the target because I'm aiming to kick through, right? If I just hit superficially, it's not gonna do a lot of damage. I wanna chop through my target. So I bring the knee across and then I start to extend my leg and as I do, I swing this arm back down and I leave it right in front of my opponent's face to blind them, extend my leg and then I put that foot down. I put that foot down and then I lift the opposite leg up to check. This is a good habit to have. If I miss my kick, it's very common that they will counter with a kick and I'm guarded here. My knee comes up to my elbow. We'll talk a little bit about that in the check, but let's go over this roundhouse kick one more time. So I take a cheat step, hand comes across, knee comes across, extend the leg for the kick, put that foot down, lift the opposite leg up for the check, and back to my guard, okay? We talked a little bit about checking. So if someone throws a kick, we're going to lift our knee up at a 45 degree angle, flexing our toes up, bringing our knee to our elbow. We don't want to bring our elbow down because then we become exposed. Our head is open for punches and for kicks. So instead we bring the knee up to the elbow and we create an entire shield on either side of our body. 45 degree angle and not straight out in front because kicks are circular. Round kicks are circular, the one I just demonstrated. So if it comes here, it's going to knock me off balance. But if I meet it head on, it's going to stop that kick from coming in. And if it's a left kick, I go here, okay? The next one that we're gonna look at is the sprawl. The sprawl is a takedown defense to a double leg penetration shot. If you take an MMA class, it's likely that you will be doing this on the first day. It's very similar to a burpee. Most instructors will say, if you don't know how to do a sprawl, do a burpee. What you're going to do from your fight stance is bend your knees and your hands are going to drop down to the mat and you're going to shoot your legs out violently, bringing your hips down to the mat keeping your arms extended, and then you're gonna pop right back up as quickly as you went down, okay? So when they say sprawl, I drop down, my hands touch the mat, feet extend out, my hips touch the mat, and then I bounce right back up into my guard, okay? Quick, looks like this, and that's the sprawl. All right guys, so hopefully this answers your question. This is a, just a couple of the basic techniques that you will need to know 
for an intro class in an MMA gym. Uh, hopefully this helps. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So if you want to continue your training, we have a playlist that we put together for you right here. These are the videos that we've made over the years that are great for beginners and just really honing in on your skills. Make sure you subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. Until then, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.